Hello, the four to six of you that are still with me in real world writing. You're about to start writing your Jupiter essay. I do want to let you know that literally the four to six of you who are still with me, I really do appreciate you being with me, and I really do believe you're going to be better off for it for two reasons. I've already explained, those of you who are going on to college, you're going to be expected to write these kinds of papers. And when it gets assigned to you, it won't be kind of like, oh, I haven't done that before. Because you will have done it before. You'll have gone through the process. You'll know what to do. It won't really be that overwhelming at that point. And secondly, um, these, these are kind of weird and tough times. And it is my opinion that the best way to work through tough times is to work. You're busy doing things. It's the best way to just kind of deal with situations. And the other option is just to sit there and sulk. And that's really not going to get you anywhere. So in my opinion, those four to six of you who are still around, I appreciate you being here. And I do think you've made the right decision. So in this particular slideshow, I'm just going to go over the odds and ends about writing. Um, these are things, as I'll say later, that I could drill you to death on, but I don't think that's going to do you any good. The best thing to do is for you to get to writing, because at this point, as far as I know, you should have your sources. You should have a thesis. You should have your research done. That's, that's it. You're ready to write. So I just want to go over these odds and ends, just to let you know where there are some resources for you, and then get going. All right, number one, if you add any sources going forward, make sure you add them to your working works cited. You should have your working works cited. It should have been turned in last week, hopefully. Uh, working means it's still in progress, and it will be in progress until the final draft is done. So any sources, any new sources you find, add them to the works cited. Don't not source something. Really important. Um... As you begin writing process, hopefully you looked at at least one exemplar. And what's the commonality of all the exemplars? They've got a lot of sources. In fact, they all have 12 plus sources. The more expansive your research, the more you have to draw on for your writing. Just because the writing has begun does not mean the research is done. Uh, cite all your quotes, paraphrases, and statistics. You do not need to cite summaries. You certainly don't need to cite your own analysis, but you do need to cite quotes, paraphrases, and statistics. Be selective with the quotes you use. You do not want a quote a palooza. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use quotes, but really think about the ones you are using. Citations. That's the, you know, the parentheses at the end of the, let's say, quote or statistic that uh, tell you, tell the reader where they came from. I would suggest you write them during the first draft of the writing process, or at the very least, put a placeholder in during the writing process. It is a real pain writing the whole thing and then having to go back through the paper and figure out where you need citations. Just write them in the first place. If they're done, if the format is incorrect, that you can fix, but having to find them, that's a pain. Jargon. What is jargon? Jargon are special words, expressions that are used in a particular field and are different and are difficult for outsiders, those not in the field, to understand. For example, um, baseball, a, uh, a squeeze play. If you know baseball, you know what a squeeze play is. If you don't, it probably completely makes no sense. That's jargon. It is your job to elucidate or make clear jargon, the words, when applicable. That is part of your job and part of your rubric. So if you have like a high science kind of paper, you got to make clear what that's what's going on with that science stuff. Uh, do not think in terms of paragraphs. Don't say this is paragraph one, this is paragraph two. Think in terms of idea groupings. Paragraphs kind of get you thinking in the wrong direction because this is not a five paragraph paper. Six, seven, th who knows how many paragraphs it is. See the sample papers. You can use headings, subheadings. They're an option and they're appropriate. Although there is a specific MLA format for them that must be followed. But the thing is, think of idea groupings, don't think of paragraphs. Uh, the research question and thesis. You can change them any time up until you submit your final draft. The only thing you're locked in on is the subject. I do suggest, however, if you change your research question or thesis, you clear it with me. But up until you submit that final, you can change them. Uh, games with spacing. Do not play games with spacing and font size, etc. just to take up space. I mean, points are no longer relevant at this point because grading is no longer relevant technically, but I do grade for MLA formatting. 
Therefore, don't play games with space. There are no extra spaces between paragraphs. There is nothing like that. There are specific rules for MLA formatting, which I will go over in depth before the final draft. For now, you know citations and you know work cited, and that is the MLA formatting you want to concern yourself with at this point. Just be aware, it's there, and we'll go over it later. Most of it's easy to adjust if you need to. As far as academic tone, reminder, no slang, no figurative or idiomatic language. You cannot use first person. You cannot use second person. Any contractions, as in can't, you're changing it to cannot. You should refer to people by, or sources, whatever, names, by either their full name, when you first mention them, or their last name. Do not just call them by their first name. You're not their friend. Avoid generalizations and avoid judgments, as in Pearson does a great job at explaining, it doesn't matter if he does a great job at explaining whatever. Avoid generalizations, avoid judgment. You are analyzing, not judging. This is not that type of writing. Uh, t this is a 10 page paper. I've been saying that repeatedly. Admittedly, I'm trying to scare you a little, but if you look at the rubric, is there anything that specifically says if you don't make 10 pages, it's not an A? No, it doesn't say that. I would prefer to read a tight seven page paper than a 10 page paper that is littered with fluff. So don't think I gotta make 10 pages. Of course, I don't think I've ever gotten any paper fewer than nine pages that has gotten an A. You can consider that. I should also mention that the works cited is part of the page count. So keep these things in mind. Don't be stressing, oh my God, I'm at eight pages, I gotta get to 10. There's nothing on the rubric that says you have to get to 10. Uh, as you begin the writing, oh yeah, fluff, chicken shit adjectives, the to be verb, the get verb. This is still applicable. It is fine to avoid worrying about that for now. It is a first draft, but this is craft and it applies to pretty much any type of writing you're going to do. Um, remember, your papers are not about regurgitating facts you found. It's about figuring out a point. You've written a question and your job is to answer it and share that with an audience. You have to keep asking yourself, why does this matter? What am I trying to say? This is not a moon essay. You are not simply informing and explaining. You are making a point. What is your point? You have an outline. You should have an outline. Let the outline help guide you. That's what it's there for. If you're really stuck in a rut, go back to the outline. Where are you? What are you trying to say? Where are you trying to get to? That's what it's there for. It's very helpful. On Canvas, under Writing Resources, there are there's stuff for intros, conclusion, objective tone, point of view, active and precise word choice. I want to note, by the way, as I always like to note, that the active and precise word choice page, the resource, is from Rice University. Fine, but it's not from the English department. It's from the engineering department. Integrating quotes into writing and overall organization. Again, on Canvas, under writing resources. If you're not sure how to do these things, and you're probably not, use your resources. One of the key elements of this class for me is how is trying to show you how to independently find and use resources. Because when you get to the next level, there's not going to be someone standing over you telling you how to do things. Uh, on Canvas, I will publish three more Jupyter samples. These are not necessarily exemplar papers, but they're solid, you know, at least a B. And if you get stuck, maybe these can be further inspiration to you. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions, would like my feedback, get stuck, whatever. I really want to stress again, seniors and juniors, you're doing this next year or in two years, and everything's really on the line because it's a midterm and you're psych class or anthropology or whatever you'll have this experience behind you and you won't really be that much in the desert not knowing where you are okay so what's your assignment there's nothing due at the end of this week you have two weeks to write your first draft and get it to me that means i will have a draft shared with me on may 1st there will obviously be no peer editing but I do have a self-editing trick that I would like you to try that I do go over on Canvas and it involves you either recording yourself reading it or you have someone read it to you word for word or you read it to someone else. But that said, two weeks to get me a first draft. Nothing is due at the end of this week. Of course, if you get it done early, feel free to share it with me. The more we can work on it, the better for you. 
Uh, have a good week. Let me know if you have any questions.